Welcome to the quick start tutorial for the CFS Coldform Steel design software. We're going to go through some basic steps to get you up and running quickly. Typically you would start by creating a new section. We'll choose File and New Section or click on the first toolbar button here. Then we choose a shape, click on Next. Define the thickness as one of these predefined gauges or type in the thickness. Define other dimensions, the section depth, width, lip length, and so forth, and click Finished. This brings up the cross section and section inputs window. We have the section tab, which contains basic information, including the material, which you can choose from this drop down. We have information about the part. We have the details of the elements, in this case, five elements with the lengths and angles and direct strength, which is for a more advanced topic. Once we have the section created, we can do some calculations from the compute menu. We can choose properties, and here we have the full section properties. We click OK, and this creates a report. We can go back to the compute menu and compute strength. This will give us the fully braced strength for the currently selected specification which is the 2016 edition of the North American spec, the US version, allowable stress design. This gives us the strength for positive and negative moments about the X and Y axes, axial compression and tension, and shear. If we click OK, that adds the output to this report, so now we have both outputs in the report. We can also do a member check. Go to the Compute menu and choose Member Check. We define first the unbraced links. We'll give it 10 feet for the span of the beam. We'll give it a 5 foot unbraced length for lateral buckling. Then we have the effective length factors. We'll leave those at 1. Here is the unbraced length for distortional buckling. We'll change that to 10 feet. We have some other coefficients and other options. We'll go ahead and enter an axial load of 5 kips and a moment of 10 kip inches and click OK. Here it displays the parameters that we just defined. It shows us the entered forces and the strength for the axial bending and shear. It also gives us the effective section properties at those applied loadings. And then finally it shows us the interaction equations. And this shows that all of these values are less than 1. So this is an acceptable design check. Click OK and that adds it to the report. Now you can also create an analysis problem using this section or any other section that you create. We'll choose the second toolbar button or choose File, New Analysis, and we'll choose a continuous beam type analysis. Click on Next. It has our section already selected. We'll choose some span lengths here. We're going to use an 8 foot first span, then a 10 foot span, and then another 8 foot span. We have some other options, but we're going to skip to the member bracing. We'll choose midpoint bracing, and then we can choose a flange that would be continuously braced. In this case, we will choose the top flange as continuously braced. When you choose a braced flange, you also need to enter a moment reduction factor. This is a number that is provided by the AISI specification, and a reference to that is in the help file. You can click on the help icon or press F1. We have this topic that covers this particular screen, and we have all these inputs defined, including the moment reduction R. In this case, we have a continuous span C section, so we're going to use R of 0.6. We'll close this window. We'll put in 0.6 and click on Next. Now we define the loads that are being applied. If this beam represents a 5 foot tributary width, we just enter these loads in terms of pounds per square foot. We can also include the beam self weight. As you can see, we have a number of different load types that we can enter, and we click on Next. Then we choose the load combinations that we want to consider in this design. The first one in the list is the ASCE 710 allowable stress design. 
We'll choose that and you can see all of the load combinations that are applicable. We can also use this option to consider the inflection points as brace points. We click finished and we have our window that shows the beam with four supports and three mid-span braces. And this indicates that the top flange is fully braced. The analysis inputs window has general information, the member information, the supports, the loadings, and the load combinations. Once the analysis is defined, you can display the shear and moment diagrams. If we go to Compute Diagrams, you can see we have the reaction shown here, the shear, the moment, and then at the bottom, the deflection. Now we're ready to do a design check. So we'll go to the Compute menu and choose Member Check, and we have three options. The first option is to report the controlling location among all load combinations. You can also report the controlling location for the current load combination, which is dead load, or you can choose specific locations for this load combination. We're going to leave it as the first option. We'll click OK and it looks at all the load combinations and all the locations and it found that the controlling location is at 18 feet, which is the second interior support on the right hand side. It shows us the member parameters and it shows us the forces at that location and the strength. Finally, we have our interaction equations, and this indicates that the design is satisfied. If we click OK, we create an analysis report. We can also check web crippling. So if we go to the Compute menu and choose Web Crippling, we have the same three options. Let's go ahead and choose the controlling location among all load combinations. And here it shows we have 8 feet, which is the first interior support, about 2.8 kips, a moment of negative 27.4 kip inches. The design check shows that we have a strength of about 1 kip, so this fails the design check. If we go ahead and add that to the report by clicking OK, we now have a report with both the member check and the web crippling check. Finally, we can produce some printouts of these outputs. From the file menu, we choose print and we can print the analysis report that we just created. We could also print the analysis inputs along with that and we can include the section inputs and the section report or any combination of these. There's also an option to print a large graphic of the cross section, which would basically be a full page graphic. So that concludes the quick start tutorial. We will be having other topics and other tutorials. Thank you.